Today, I'm going to finish up my lectures on linear algebra. I'll start off by going over or introducing something called an orthogonal matrix. And then I'm going to talk about three different uh, factorizations. So you can factor a, a matrix into something uh, called a single singular value factorization. You can also write it as a um, product of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And then there's a, a third factorization called QR factorization. And I'm going to use that to show you how you can, or show you how you can solve least squares problems using the QR factorization. And all of those factorizations basically involve splitting a matrix up into an orthogonal matrix or, or one or more orthogonal matrices, and then uh, one other matrix that's designed to have a special property. So I'm going to go back to talking just about vectors for a second. So suppose I have two vectors, uh, Q and W. They're orthogonal, so they're perpendicular to one another, if the inner product of Q and W is equal to 0. So now let's suppose I have a set, so here, um, a set of m vectors. So here, q1 is not an element of q. q1 is actually a vector. So I have q1 up to qm. And remember, these are vectors. I'm still referring to the same vectors from the first line. So they're in an m-dimensional space. So these are vectors of m elements. And I have m of them. And this notation here means um, they live in m-dimensional space minus 0. So this is the set minus operation. So I'm just trying to say here that the zero vector is not allowed to be in this set, because that's sort of trivially orthogonal to everything, because anything times zero is going to be zero. <clears throat> so I have a, a set of m vectors where the zero vector is not allowed. And I want to assume that every pair of these vectors, so any, you know, for any i and any j, where i and j are different numbers between 1 and m, if I take the inner product of those two vectors, I'm going to get 0. So that means every pair of vectors is orthogonal. So every pair of vectors is perpendicular. And then I'm going to define a vector. So for each qj, I'm going to divide qj by the length of qj. And I'm going to call that, call that q tilde j. And so if I take a vector and I divide it by its length, I end up with something called a unit vector, which points in the same direction as the original vector, but it has length 1. So it doesn't matter if, if qj, if it was a really short vector, then dividing by its length is going to make it longer, so that it's equal to 1. And if it's a really long vector, dividing by its length is going to make it shorter, so the length is equal to 1. So for any non-zero vector, this is going to give me a vector that points in the same direction, but that has length 1. And I'm going to call this set, new set of vectors. So Q, I assume this little a was meant to be a 1. I don't know how I would have made that typo. Um, so Q tilde 1 up to Q tilde m are called a orthonormal set of vectors. So orthogonal means that any pair of them has a right angle in between them. And then when they also have length 1, they get this extra little word normal here. So orthonormal means a set of vectors that are mutually perpendicular, and each vector has to have length 1. And now I want to make a matrix Q that has these orthonormal vectors as its columns. And think about what happens when I consider product Q, Q transpose, or Q transpose Q. So the easier one is going to be Q transpose Q. And what I'm going to have is in the first row, so when I take the transpose of a matrix, that turns the columns into the rows. So Q transpose has these orthonormal vectors as its rows. And the original Q has these orthonormal vectors as its columns. Then when I make this product Q transpose Q, what's going to happen? So in the first element, the 1-1 the one, one entry of the product is going to end up being Q1 transpose, Q tilde 1 transpose times 
tilde 1. So that's just going to be the squared length of this vector. But since the length is 1, that's going to be 1. And then for any other product in the first row, I'd have q tilde 1 transpose times q tilde some other index. And because these are orthogonal, that's going to be equal to 0. So it ends up happening when I, I make these products. In the off-diagonal entries, I have qi, q tilde i transpose q tilde j. And because those are orthogonal, that's how I, I made this set of vectors, that's going to be 0, except on the diagonal where these vectors hit themselves. So I have q tilde 1 transpose q tilde 1. And because it's an orthonormal set of vectors, that's going to, have, that's going to be equal to 1. So what I end up with is the identity matrix. So I've, I've found this matrix. If I take this orthonormal set of vectors, make this product q transpose q, then I end up with these dot products down the diagonal that are just the length of the vectors. And then the mixed dot products are going to be 0. So I, I get the identity matrix. So an orthogonal, um, an orthonormal set of vectors, when I put it into a matrix Q, has this property that Q transpose Q is the identity matrix. And that holds for QQ transpose as well. And so what I'm trying to do here is I, I've now found a family of matrices. So if this matrix has orthonormal columns, then Q transpose is equal to Q inverse, because I, I have a matrix where if I multiply either Q transpose Q or QQ transpose, I end up with the identity matrix. So the reason these orthogonal matrices are going to be nice is because I can compute inverses just by taking the transpose, so just by swapping the rows and columns. And so this matrix has a, a special name. So a square matrix Q, so it has to be square, same number of rows and columns, is orthogonal if Q transpose Q is the identity matrix and QQ transpose is also the identity matrix. And so it's a little bit strange the way these got named. So vectors can be an orthogonal set as long as all of their, um, you know, their pairwise dot products for two different vectors are equal to 0, but it doesn't say anything about the length. Orthonormal vectors have their pairwise perpendicular and have length 1. But for some reason, when we put those into a matrix, the matrix we get isn't called an orthonormal matrix. It's called an orthogonal matrix. But it also has this condition that it's not a diagonal matrix that I'm getting. I'm getting actually the identity matrix. So the columns of Q have to have length 1. And it turns out that if you, if you actually think about what these are doing in space, so it's easiest just to, to deal with the 2 by 2 case, orthogonal matrices represent rotations and reflections. So if I, if I have a matrix, you know, I, I think I've, I've shown you guys a rotation matrix already. <clears throat> so it turns out that if I, if I rotate a vector, that counts as an orthogonal transformation. That's something that I can write as an orthogonal matrix times a vector. And I, I can rotate that vector through a certain angle. Also, if I have a line, I can reflect a vector across that line using an orthogonal matrix. So for example, let's um, define Q to just be this matrix. So cosine, negative sine, sine, cosine. And this rotates a vector in the xy plane through an angle theta. And so you can see that this is going to be an orthogonal, or you can check that this is an orthogonal matrix just by making this product, Q transpose Q. Oops. So Q transpose, I'm just going to take the, the first row of this, of Q, and put that in the first column of Q transpose, and then the second row goes in the second column. And then when I do the matrix multiplication, on the diagonal elements, I'm going to get cosine times cosine, so cosine squared, plus sine times sine, so sine squared. So it's a bit complicated. So on the diagonal elements, I end up with cosine squared plus sine squared. And on the off-diagonal elements, it ends up being minus cosine sine plus sine cosine. 
So that cancels, each term cancels the other one out for every value of theta. So this is always going to be equal to zero. And then I get a symmetric thing in the other off-diagonal element. So cosine squared plus sine squared, we all know that's equal to one. And this is zero, and this is zero. So this is going to give me the identity matrix. So I had enough space at the bottom right corner to fit one more i in. And we also want to check that, so Q transpose Q equals QQ transpose equals I. This was my condition for an orthogonal matrix. But that implies that Q inverse is equal to Q transpose, because that's also the definition for the inverse of a matrix. So we need to check that Q transpose is actually the inverse of Q. And so this is going to use a result uh, on something called even and odd functions. So an even function is if I put in minus theta, I get the same value back. So in this case, cosine, if you think about what that looks like, if I go a little bit positive, so I go to positive x, or I go the other way a little bit to negative x, because that's a symmetric function around 0, I'm going to get the same value as long as I'm just x away from 0 then it doesn't matter which way I go, positive direction or negative direction. So that means I can write cosine of theta as cosine of minus theta. Both of those numbers are going to have the same value. And sine is something that's called an odd function. So, oops, did I mess this up? Um, so sine if you think it's going to do exactly the opposite. So when I put in sine of, if I have sine of theta, uh, when I put in minus theta, I should get minus sine of theta because it's, it's something that's sort of flipped over the origin rather than just reflected across the y-axis. So let me just check what I did. So Q should have the minus sine in the top right. And so when I put in the minus theta here, uh, that should have taken away this minus sign here. So let's see if I got it right. OK, these typos are killing me. But essentially, what I'm, what I'm trying to show here is that Q transpose is the same thing as Q, just with a minus theta put in. And so what that's going to do is Q rotates something through an angle theta. Q transpose rotates it through an angle minus theta. So if I rotate through theta and then through minus theta, I end up back at the same point. And staying at the same point is exactly what would have happened had I multiplied something by the identity matrix. Okay. The other nice property that an orthogonal matrix has is that it preserves dot products. So if I have a dot product x and y, and I multiply both x and y by an orthogonal matrix Q. So I have Qx dot Qy. Well, if I write that using uh, matrix and vector notation rather than as a dot product, I can write that as Qx, that product, that quantity transposed, times the quantity Qy. And then I have a rule for how I can deal with transposes of products of matrices. I take the transpose of, transpose of each element, and I put them in the opposite order. So the quantity Qx transpose becomes x transpose Q transpose. And then I have Qy just stays the same. And now what I end up with in the middle here is this Q transpose Q, which is equal to the, oops, which is equal to the identity matrix. So I can just imaginarily, um, imagine um, multiplying either y by the identity matrix or x transpose times the identity matrix. Either way, it's going to give me y or x transpose back. And I end up with x transpose y, which is exactly the definition of the dot product of x and y. And the reason this is going to be really useful is because the length of a vector would just be the square root of say, x dot x. So that means that if I multiply x by an orthogonal matrix Q, so Q, is, Q has to have, for, for this multiplica multiplication to work, 
x is a vector of, say, m elements. Q has to be an m by n, m by m matrix. So the product Qx is also going to be a vector of m elements. And the length of that vector is equal to the length of the original vector x. And this makes sense, again, if you just think about it in terms of a rotation matrix. Because if I rotate a vector, the length is staying the same. If I take this and I just rotate it up here, it's the distance from this point down to the origin is going to be the same as for the vector I started with. 